The turmoil in the Middle East has dominated the headlines in recent weeks. Former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani just returned from the region, and he came back with some brutal criticisms of the Obama administration. And I sat down earlier to get his comments. Let's take a look. All right, so you just got back from Israel. Yep, just and, got back. And you met with the prime minister. I did, yes. All right, well, I am about as nervous as I can be about the instability in the Middle East. I mean, look, you read the polls, people in Egypt, 75% say that if you're an apostate, they support Sharia law mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm, death penalty. Mm -hmm. If you don't support it, it's 85%, not right. 75. You know, how, uh, how precarious do you think things are overall there? Well, I think things are precarious because the, the outcome is unknown which is saying a lot about the lack of intelligence that we have, right? Yeah. I mean, we're, uh, our government looks particularly behind the curve in all of this. I mean, we look like we're just catching up, and uh, if we ever get in the right place, it's usually too late. So I think that makes you very concerned that we don't have a really good, um, really good feel for this. Now, the Israelis, on the other hand, seem to have a little more confidence than we do. In, in, in confidence in the outcome? No, no, confidence in the fact that they can handle whatever Whatever, whatever emerges. Whatever comes along. Here's what, what I guess I fear the most. Here, for example, the elections that, that brought Hamas to power. In Hamas's charter, it talks about the destruction of the state of Israel. Ahmadinejad keeps talking about wiping Israel off the map. Same thing with the terrorist group Hezbollah. Right. Israel is a tiny country. It needs defendable borders. And even as we speak right now, how many minutes do they even have to defend themselves? Four or five. All right, you, yeah, Four or five been, right you've now. Been on, you've been on all their borders. I've been on all their borders. I've the, seen them all. The whole I've country. Seen their defense. I've, yeah. I've been over on the other side. I was, I was this close to the Palestinian Authority, drove right past it uh, for about half a day mm -hmm. uh, the day before. The reality is, right now, they've got about four or five minutes to react. That's it. To, to, to an attack. Just, I mean, just think of what it would be like if we put ter a terrorist state in the middle of Central Park. <laughs> That's how close it is. Right. Yeah. That's what we're asking them to New do. Well, well, in, in the United States, you know, when you break, we always break down elections along demographic lines. Uh, the, the Jewish community in the United States has supported Barack Obama. Now, I know that some of that support has been waning. Right. Why, I, I'm having a hard time understanding why, considering I think he's almost been hostile. Look what, look what nearly happened in the United Nations a week ago. I, I, um... I said to the prime minister, which I'm happy to repeat to you because he didn't respond. Diplomatically, I don't think he could. I said, I have the feeling, uh, prime minister, that you're the first Israeli prime minister that sitting here in your office can't absolutely count on the president of the United States. This is the first time that's happened. And um, I don't know if, the, pre I don't know if, if uh, the prime minister of Israel could count on the president of the United States. And he should be able to because I, I grew up and my views are shaped a lot by working for Ronald Reagan. And Ronald Reagan's theory of our relationship with Israel had nothing to do with domestic politics. You know what it had to do with? Israel was our friend. Geopolitical, Israel, only democracy. Israel democracy. stood with us against the Soviet Union. Yeah. Israel stood with us when we, need, when we needed places from which to undertake attacks or to defend ourselves. If they're our friend, he would say, well, then we're with them. But I think the Jewish community has supported Obama in much higher numbers in the U.S. than in Israel. As oh, my gosh, yeah. Why? I don't know. Uh, maybe it's the uh, conflict of Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, the whole domestic agenda, the, um, the sense that uh, uh, many of the Jewish people forever have been Democrats. There is a large and growing uh, Republican uh, Jewish coalition that's very powerful and uh, was very helpful to me every time that, that I ran. Yeah. And uh, maybe this will change things. But, but the reality is that the president of the United States has forfeited a leadership role here. We've got Sarkozy and Cameron and Merkel and uh, other people out front on this, and the president isn't educating. He isn't educating on what the real meaning of democracy is. He True. isn't using this. A day late and a dollar if, short. If we're going to lose friendly dictators, <laughs> like, like, uh, like Mubarak, who's bad and good, right? There's a bad part of Mubarak and a good part of Mubarak. Well, why the heck don't we use this opportunity to lose unfriendly dictators like, like, Ahmadinejad. like, like Ahmadinejad and Khomeini? Yeah. How about applying some pressure to Syria with Assad? How about, how about leading and, the way in a no-fly zone with Gaddafi? And how about talking about China? It's another point. What about talking about China? If, because if they we're own have, too much of our debt. You know, that's also a, a, a psych psychological problem. They own so much of our debt that they can't see us go under. They would be ruined 
Mm. if they did something precipitous that would affect our debt. That's right, because they wouldn't get their money. Because they invested back. so much in us. <laughs> That's a good point. Secondly, yeah, we got the power. We should remind ourselves we are the most powerful nation on earth. Our GDP is three times China. Mm -hmm. If you count there 700 million people in poverty, our GDP is effectively 10 times China. Our military dwarfs their military. So stop being so uh, timid. frightened, timid, timid. Yeah. And uh, I, I think it's part of something you talk about a lot. Mm -hmm. It's an inability of the president to understand American exceptionalism. We really are an exceptional country. Mm -hmm. We are by far the leading country in the world. We should start acting like the leading country in the world. And if we don't, somebody else is going to start acting like the leading country in the world. And what good is that for anybody else? I mean, if we're not the leader of the world, who is? China? All right, last question. You running for president? Uh, not right this minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how close are you to making a decision? Uh, I'm not close. You're I've not got close. a lot of thinking to do. And, are you considering it? And I'm thinking, yes. Okay. Mr. Mayor, thanks for being with us. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Ronnie. And coming up, Mexico in March is usually spring break central, but we've got an important warning that may have you reconsidering your kids' vacation location. Plus, critics are calling on Attorney General Eric Holder to resign. We will reveal what he said that has some accusing him of, quote, liberal racism. That and much more coming up straight ahead. All right, so it's that time of year again, March, a month that not only means basketball madness, but also beach madness as America's youth escape to exotic locations for their annual spring break blowouts. But before parents let their kids go to celebrate south of the border, there is something very important they need to consider. The ongoing drug war in Mexico is even more dangerous than ever before, and the violence has even crept into the once peaceful tourist areas. Now, authorities in Texas are warning that because they uh, are not able to protect tourists caught in the crossfire of that drug war, college students should stay away and head to someplace safer for spring break. So should parents really be this concerned or is Mexico getting a bad rap? Joining me with the reaction, publisher of Catalina Magazine, Kathy Aru, and attorney and Fox News contributor Mercedes Cohen. Um, I don't want my kids going on spring break, period. Have you seen the images? They're funneling beer <laughs> right into the stomach. Exactly. Uh, we could show any, we see what they look like. They're in their bikinis, they're out there dancing, sex, partying, drinking, drugs. You know, I, I really would never want to tune into MTV and see my daughter doing that. Uh, <laughs> however, however, what? It is safe to go to Mexico. Everything I wouldn't go. Yeah. Everything you're hearing about it has nothing to do with the tourist towns. Tourism is up in Mexico. Six million Americans go to Mexico every year. Twenty-two million people visit Mexico every year. You haven't heard of one incident I've happening in any tourist in town. In four years, the, the murders themselves have gone up 700 percent. Four years, Not against 2006 tourists. to 2010. Not against Acapulco. tourists. Acapulco. Yeah, no, out of, out of, out of 15,000, 200 of them are tourists. That's a lot of individuals that are being Not killed, involved American the tourists. But they're caught in the crossfire. They're kidnapped. That's a myth. Back in December, there was an American tourist that was taken out of a restaurant and then executed. How is that possible? Look, so one American life is enough to say, I'm not going to Mexico. Nothing to do with the drug cartels. But what, there are kidnappings, decapitations. It's it's actually not. This is not. This is not against tourists. This has not happened in the, near the tourist section of Acapulco. All the tourist towns in Mexico but are. It's happening in Acapulco. It's, it's, it's happening in Acapulco. It's happening. Not to tourists. Oh, not to tourists, which is what the point is I, look, here. I'm going to be honest. I, there's the one point is Mexico. The other point I'll disagree with you on is you're going to let your 17 year old daughter go to spring break. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay, and, and when she's <laughs> and 18. And she's watching tonight, Sean, and she's you, only You want eight. your daughter doing that? No, not, not a chance. Not a chance. And do you think it's dangerous for these kids overall? Alcohol poisoning, drugs, people dropping stuff in their drinks. Uh, what are the chances a lot of those kids are having sex? Just, uh, just an estimate. Just a lucky guess. Scientific <laughs> guess. Let's see. They're sort of bouncing around. They're wearing lit next to nothing and clothing. Yeah, yeah. chances are they certainly are. In, 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 but it could be happening it, anywhere. It has nothing to do it with can, Mexico. But, but there's an added being danger. Look, listen, we've got to just face a reality here. And I have nothing against Mexico. And I know that they had this joint press conference. But I'm going to tell you something. The problems, the, the cartels, the crime, the murder, the kidnapping is rampant in Mexico. It has it's not just reached a fact. the tourist. Has not reached the tourist, though. That's the fact. But, okay. Hasn't touched the but, tourism but, the, the, but that's not true, though, Kathy. There are 300 American tourists that died between 2006 and 2010. That's a lot of individuals. And, and, they're say, and, and the crime's escalating. They're saying 2010. Look, they, they had this kidnapping in, in December with an American tourist. 
taken out of a restaurant, eating with his wife. How can we possibly say that Mexico is safe if just three months ago if an American tourist was was taken out and executed? There's actually more crime in Jamaica and Brazil than there is in Mexico when it comes to murder rates. So these, the, I don't know where these statistics are coming from. There's a laundry list of warnings for individuals that want to go to Mexico. Number one, don't, don't, don't accept... Don't, no, not, no, this is to American tourists. Don't wear jewelry. Don't walk around alone. Don't leave the resort area. Don't leave, don't accept a drink for someone else. And, and P.S., be Which is the same if you go to Oh, and by the way, what I about, would follow that advice if what, I went to Italy. Kathy, what about the roadblocks? They're saying if you go up to a roadblock and somehow you get confused, because, you know, these, these law enforcement officials might be on the take, and that's the other warning that they're giving American tourists. But it hasn't be careful on these, on these individuals. They've been individuals that have been harmed. They were four that were killed just in the last year. Nothing to do with the drug cartels, which is what the problem is right now. Everyone's afraid of the drug cartels, but it has nothing to do with the tourism industry in the Mexico. The roadblocks were put Tourists up. should always be careful. Kathy, those roadblocks were put up for the, the drug trafficking to stop. So then, so you're a law-abiding citizen. You go up to that roadblock. You don't understand. You hesitate. Suddenly, you're shot. And that's what happened to a family where four individuals were killed in a car. It is extraordinarily dangerous. The statistics are there. It's escalating. It's not going to get better. Last word. <laughs> I can't get a word in it. <laughs> I know, a, it has nothing to do with the tourist industry. These are border towns. They, all the travel advisories are for the border towns. These are not for the tourist towns. My kids aren't going, period. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but uh, you may want to you may want to think about it if you're a parent. Time now to check in. Thank you both for being with us. Time now to check in with Greta Van Suster for, Suster for sneak peek. Steve He's Steve. literally only five yards. You couldn't have come in live and sat down with us. You just didn't. You don't. I know. You never asked me. I hung around the green room long enough, oh. hoping that you'd ask me, but I. You just. Wouldn't, All right. Do you want you to know? join the Great American Panel? You're welcome. I would. Now you know that I have to stay here, though, because you you tossed me, and we got to get going on our show. You you purposely wait until it's too late to ask me. Anyway, we got a great. Me on, you'd never ask me on your show. It's unbelievable. You won't stay this late. I've asked you. I've even begged you. Anyway, I'll tell you who will stay this late. Frank Luntz is here. Dick Morris is going to be joined on the record. We have the very latest from Wisconsin, and we have so. So much more back to you and uh, right. I know you'll be out of here in about 10 minutes but not your heart be troubled our great 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 American panel is next